We're in the middle of August, and it's time for another garden update. August, September, and October will be very good pepper months for us. The peppers you're looking at here are Otis wheat peppers. They start out yellow in color and then change to purple as they mature. And then finally, when fully ripe, they turn to red. I knew the New Mex Heritage Big Jim chili peppers were supposed to grow some big peppers, but I was still impressed when I saw the first ones that got close to full size. They really are an impressive sized chili pepper. I haven't tried one yet, but I hope to in the near future. I have a couple of Jimmy Nardello pepper plants, and both of them are loaded with peppers. This one is called Mega Gold. It's a sweet pepper that turns yellow when fully ripe. And it grows very large peppers, as you can see. This is one of our lipstick pepper plants, and as you can see, they're a very productive pepper. It's also a sweet pepper. I got the seeds for this one for Christmas, and it's a hybrid sweet pepper called Double Delight, and it also grows pretty large peppers. This is a sweet pepper called Lesia, and I'm looking forward to trying this one because it's supposed to have very good tasting peppers, and they have kind of a unique heart shape, so that makes them kind of easy on the eyes too. This is one of our favorite peppers. It's called shishito, and we like to just saute these with a little olive oil, put a little salt on them, and we can eat a whole plateful. I even did a video on that. If you want to check that out, I'll put a link below. Brazilian starfish is a pepper that grows to about five feet tall, and they turn red when ripe. We've got a lot of green ones, but not any red ones yet. This one comes in at about 10 to 30,000 on the Scoville scale. The Sugar Rush Peach is another hot pepper and it's very productive also. And it grows to probably about four feet tall and I have it in a cage otherwise it would sprawl out in all directions. This one is loaded with blooms and small peppers. So we're gonna get a lot of peppers off of this one. This is what a ripe one looks like, and they are very hot when compared to a Brazilian starfish. Here's a look at our other Jimmy Nardello pepper, and it's covered with peppers too. I'm really looking forward to trying this one, and we have a couple that are almost ripe now. I'm not sure what's doing it, but we have something that's eating our peppers too. This is one of our hybrid peppers, and something ate most of it. I set up a trail camera, but I haven't been able to catch on camera whatever is doing the damage yet. Our two eggplants are putting out plenty of fruit for the two of us. We have some small bananas on one of our banana trees. This one is the Musa Velutina, and they have pink bananas. I did a video on the banana trees on Thursday. If you want to see that, I'll put a link down below. In the last few weeks, I found out that the Chinese python snake beans go from just about right to way too big in just a few days. And here I'm cutting off some that are too big. They recommend that you harvest between 12 and 30 inches, and some of these were well over 4 feet. They say that you can use the fully mature ones like a tomato paste by scraping out the inside, but I haven't tried that. We finally got to try one of our mountain sweet yellow watermelons. And it has an interesting yellow color instead of the standard red. This one was also getting ready to bust open on its own. The minute I broke the rind with my knife, it split from end to end. But it was still good inside. I also harvested a royal golden watermelon. And they're orange when they're fully ripe kind of like a pumpkin looks, except they're red on the inside. I haven't cut into this one yet, but I have it in the fridge chilling. The small chrysanthemum melons have been very productive. I picked all of these in one day, 
and we still have well over a dozen left on the vines. Here's a look at some of the melons that are still on the vine. These are in the cage, but there are also some that are on the ground. These vines kind of have a tendency to spread out in all directions. This is the time of year when we start to see more garden spiders. This one was between the sweet potato vines and the peanuts. I usually try to leave them be unless they get right in my way. This is what a peanut flower looks like. Below each flower, along the stem, these little things that look like roots start growing and they're called pegs. Those will eventually go down into the ground and on the end of each one of them is where a peanut will form. I accidentally exposed this peanut when I was pulling some weeds. I did a video on growing peanuts in a container and if you want to know more about peanuts and how they grow, I'll post a link to that down below. We still have a few tomatoes left on the Baronia and a whole lot of tomatoes left on the Tasmanian chocolate and I'm hoping I can keep the plants going long enough to harvest some of those. The ginger that I have growing in a container is really starting to look a lot better recently and it still has some new sprouts coming up at the bottom of the plant. I'm growing one ubi purple yam in a container and I tied a string to a tree limb that was just above the container and let it climb up into the tree. And it's probably about 15 feet up in there now. We also have one climbing a trellis over by the fence and one growing over in one of our tomato cages. Some of our original long beans are starting to get a little worn out. So I planted these in early July and they're already close to eight feet tall. And some of them at the base are already starting to form little beans. The Mexican sunflower that I planted very late so it would be in its prime when the migrating monarchs come through is about seven feet tall now and the Malabar spinach next to it is kind of sprawling into it and the tomatillo next to it. The sunflowers were kind of staggered in the way they bloomed, which worked out pretty well. I've been pulling a few that are worn out and picked clean by the birds, but we still have some that are still attracting pollinators. I was pulling some old worn out cucumber vines out of the garden and I noticed some aphids on the bottom of some of them and in the center of your screen those little beige colored dots are aphid mummies. A parasitic wasp will lay its eggs on the aphids. Then the wasp larva will feed on the aphid which works out pretty well if you have aphids in your garden. Here's a leaf with a lot more aphid mummies on it. I started a couple of cucumber vines in early July just so I would have some late cucumbers. Before you go, leave a comment and let us know how your garden's doing. If you're just now finding this channel and you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. We'll see you next time.